uh, Mr. S.K. Rungta, who is former MD Vedanta, Aluminium and Non-Executive Chairman Balco, uh, joins in uh, to discuss more. Mr. Rungta, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks very much for taking out the time, sir. Good morning. Aluminium prices have taken uh, a knock, slipping briefly even below $1,775 per ton. And now to add to the woes, uh, you have uh, Alunorate, uh, which also seems to be very close to getting uh, its embargo lifted entirely. Do you think that prices will continue to stay sub-1900? Well, uh, you know, there are uh, few factors which are driving the aluminium prices down. And uh, that is concerned on the global aluminium consumption growth, primarily in China, where the growth is certainly, you know, declining. And th that has... Uh, coupled with uh, increase in the alu aluminium inventory in LME is really driving the aluminium prices down. But uh, prices have come down to almost uh, two-year lows, and at this rate many smelters across the globe will start losing money. In fact, uh, some of them will incur operational losses. So if these price levels persist for some time long, then surely we can see the closure of smelter capacities across the world, including in China, where many smelters will be making losses at these prices. And that can rebalance the market. Other factor which has led to this situation is that expected winter cuts in Chinese production didn't come up to the levels which were expected. And they have been much lesser than what was anticipated. Right. So what's now the current aluminum the and... Right. In Brazil, uh, yeah, the Brazil refinery, it is believed as per report that the uh, state has given the clearance, but I suppose they have to obtain the clearance from the court. And let us see what happens, but uh, that is uh, positive for those which are not integrated producers. If the alumina prices come down, then obviously the cost pressure on some of the standalone smelters will uh, reduce. Right. Um, just wanted to understand really, you know, what's the current aluminum and alumina demand and supply situation and uh, if Alunorte does uh, come in with full-fledged operations, how will this really tilt the scales? You know, alumina globally, if you look at it, the demand is in the region of about 65 million tons. And uh, more than 50% of the production is accounted for by China. And so China is the biggest driver of aluminium consumption as well as production. And so uh, similar to the case of other commodities like steel, zinc, etc. So, you know, the refinery output going up in Brazil will only make more alumina available for the smelters and uh, does not impact as such the, uh, you know, overall demand prospects. The demand will depend upon what happens to the global economy and how things uh, work out with regard to between U.S. and China on their trade tensions. If the Chinese or expected stimulus in the Chinese economy because China will continue to be the major driver of aluminium demand across the globe. Secondly, China in the year 2018 has exported almost a million ton more of aluminium in spite of 10% duty by US. That almost, almost amounts to 3 to 4 percent of consumption other than Chinese market across the globe, which is significant. So ultimately for prices to look up, it is important that Chinese uh, exports come down and China enforce significant cuts in their capacities. Right. So while China's trade data was all in, uh, you know, you have been seeing that uh, a slew of data has come in pointing towards weakness. Now, I don't know whether it's sustained or not. What stands out and what's been an outlier is that aluminium exports have jumped 20% despite U.S. tariffs. 
Uh, where is such strong demand coming from for Chinese products? No, it's not a question of demand, you know, after all, uh, it can replace the domestic demand in those countries. So, uh, obviously, you know, like imports into India have also grown. Uh, we have uh, seen 20% growth in import of scrap uh, as well as the primary aluminium in first uh, nine to ten, nine months of current financial year. And so has it gone to uh, EU and other consuming countries. So, all of it need not be driven by the growth in those markets, it can also uh, replace the domestic production. And that is, that is what probably impacts the prices. But uh, one factor is to be seen, as I said earlier, that uh, there is sufficient cost pressure on uh, the smelters across the world at these prices, which are not really sustainable in long run sub-1800 prices are not sustainable. Hmm. So, um, let's talk about the Indian producers. What's the average smelting cost currently? We understand it's hovering around $2,000 per ton. Where? In India? Right, sir. You are talking of Indian producers? That's right. Yeah, yeah Indian producers, I suppose, uh, Indian producers' prices vary from producer to producer. We have Hindalco, which is fully integrated producer, right from bauxite up to the smelting capacity. Then uh, Vedanta is partly integrated. They have some alumina capacity, but not sufficient to take care of their entire smelting capacity, so they have to import alumina. And Nalco is integrated producer, but if they go by the transfer pricing of alumina to their smelter, then their costs are also high. So probably Indalco is best place in terms of the cost today because they are fully integrated, uh, followed by Nalco and Vedanta cost probably may be highest of the three. Okay, Mr. Rungta, great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time out and speaking with us.